when I met my ex-wife. I had summarized all that, and I came to the conclusion that I'm not good for anybody. I'm a fucking loser. Um, I'm happy I have comedy. I don't have to fucking worry about insurance or phone bills or mortgage. I'm going to get in this car. I'm going to fucking go on the road, and that's what I'm going to fucking do. Never again will I weigh down a woman with my bullshit, my, uh, you know, stupidity. I'm not going to do this. And it's fucked up when you think that way because when you're not looking for somebody is when you find somebody. It's like when Vito left the Sopranos and he fucking went up to Maine and he found that fucking half a fag, the cook who committed suicide. Rest in peace. Remember, they got into an argument and he says to him, I wasn't even looking for you. You know, it's the same thing when you're not, when you're not looking for somebody, that's when you find somebody. You know, when I met my fucking wife, sorry about that. I, I was just thinking about it. I have to fucking paint the picture for you cocksuckers. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm like Bob Ross before the operation. Uh, so, when I met Terry, Terry had everything I loved in a woman. Not to mention she was from the South. I, I loved that. I heard all these things about Southern women. And I still remember being with her the first 90 days. And, like, one day I got to her house, I was broke, and she made me a fucking great lunch. Uh, for fucking a Cuban beans. She, she fucking did it up, red beans. I was so fucking excited, but there was still that doubt I had. I had a doubt that I'm not going to make her happy. I'm going to let her down, you know, in every perspective, you know, emotionally, sexually. I'm a fucking fire. I'm a dud. You know, I know this going in that I'm a fucking dud. How am I going to fucking... For the first six months I dated Terry, I did like her. I did have feelings for her. I was starting to love her, and I didn't want to. I was like, I'm not going to hurt this girl. I'm going to stick around here for a couple of weeks until she tells me I'm a bum like everybody else, and then, you know, I'll move on. I'll find a new girl. When I look at Terry this week when we went to Hershey and we were walking in the park, and there was one point, like, me and her are connected, like, synchronized in a way because she was going for a walk and I had a phone call to make. And I'm sitting there making this call and I look up and this fucking Nathan's hot dogs, right? And I go, holy shit, maybe they got a lemonade. So I, walk, I saw all these people walking around with a lemonade. And I go, I walk up and there's no fucking lemonade. But I saw chili dogs. I'm like, fuck, I go for a chili dog, but I got to watch my weight watcher points. Those chili dogs are a motherfucker. So I go, awesome. My wife texts me. She goes, we're under the umbrella because it was really hot. There was a big umbrella where you could sit there and drink something. So I walk over and I go, we got to get a lemonade. And my wife goes, fuck that. I'm fucking starving. I go, holy shit. How about a chili dog from Nathan's? And on the walk over, I was like, holy fuck, me and my wife are synchronized. Like, we ate breakfast together. You know, she had, like, a snack. She's on noon, whatever, that diet. She's lost, like, eight pounds. She loves it. And uh, we were both fucking hungry. And we both, like, fucking looked at each other at the same time. And after we had that chili dog, we were walking in the park, and I'm like, I can't believe I've been with this woman for 21 fucking years. There was a time when I couldn't be with a woman for 21 minutes. Like, nobody wanted to be next to me. I, I have worked it out with that. And I, and I still remember being with her at the three-year mark and her asking me, what are we doing? And me going, I, I don't know. And her going, like, you got to make a move pretty soon. And it was like me telling my mother I got to live back. I didn't want to tell Terry I didn't want to get married because I knew she would tell me, then you got to go. I put that fucking marriage off for nine years. Nine years. I wanted to be absolutely, positively sure that I wasn't going to waste her time. I wasn't going to waste her life. And I could be a good husband. I was at the fucking crossroads before I quit drugs with her because I thought I would never get off drugs and I didn't want to put that on her. And then finally I looked at her one day and I go, you know what? I got to take a higher fucking road. 
I got to stop doing drugs because I don't want her to fucking find me. And when I did that, that's when I knew she was the woman for me. After I stopped the drugs, I go, you know what? At the year mark, I'll ask her to propose. She didn't say nothing, so I'm like, I'm not going to fucking propose. Fuck that. I could do this for as long as we could do this. I could do this. Well, let me tell you something. She went to Tennessee, and when she came back, after like four days, she went to visit her parents, and she went to see her brother's child. Her brother had a child. And when my wife came back, she wasn't the same person. She just wasn't the same person. And I remember I fucking beat around the bush for about three or four months, and I was like, what am I going to do? She's not going to fucking stop, you know. She wasn't even t she wasn't even forcing me or nothing. I could just tell that she wasn't happy. She was uh, a 30-something-year-old woman. She was single. She wasn't married. She didn't have a child. We were living in a fucking studio apartment. We had no money. We had a shitty fucking car. I mean, our prospects were fucking horrible. What was I going to fucking do? And I'll never forget... One day I went to a Santeria fucking read with my karate teacher. We were talking, and he's like, there's a woman in your life that isn't really happy, blah, 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 blah. And I, I knew exactly what he was talking about. When I got in the car, I did not hesitate. I called her father. I asked her for a hand in marriage. And then I called Terry, and I go, listen, we're getting married fucking in two months, blah, 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 blah. I talked to your dad. We're going to order the ring tonight. I, I want you to say yes. And I knew, you know, that I was going out on the limb. But I knew, I do, a, I work a lot better when I got a gun to my head. Some instances, you know what I'm saying? Some instances, I work a lot better with a gun to my head. Sometimes I don't need a gun to my head. But uh, I married him. I married her, and I had no fucking regrets. And now we've been married for 12 years. We've been together for 21. And I grew into the man I wanted to become, man. It's, uh, it's a weird thing. I just wanted Mike to know that I had his back. I know a lot of you guys out there are thinking about getting engaged or whatever. Just be prepared. Just know that this is what you want to do. Listen, man, being a husband is not fucking, it's the hardest thing I've done because I'm a fucking idiot.